Hello YouTube Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with a video about radio email. I did two previous videos on this topic, but after reviewing them I decided to do them over. So I deleted those videos and this is part one of two of how you can use your amateur radio equipment to send and receive electronic email. You'll need a few items before you can do this. Of course you'll need an amateur radio license. You'll need an amateur radio with an antenna and an antenna tuner. You'll need a computer, a radio modem, radio email software, and internet access to set that software up. As far as the hardware goes, uh, looking at this slide, if you already have amateur radio equipment, you may own some of these items. And if you don't, these are the things you're going to need. You're going to need a computer, a radio modem or terminal node controller, sometimes called a TNC, an amateur radio with a power supply, an antenna tuner, and of course an antenna. For software, uh, for the system I'm going to discuss today, the winlink.org system, the two most popular applications out there are RMS Express and PackLink, and you can download these programs for free from winlink.org. As I said, the network I'm going to discuss today is Winlink 2000, the global radio email system, and their website is www.winlink.org, and this is a global network that supports electronic mail using amateur radio equipment and frequencies, it was designed and built and is maintained by amateur radio operators and it's a global system. The backbone of this system are the five common message servers and they're located around the world. They're geographically separated. There's one in Canada, California, Austria, Australia, and Washington DC and they communicate with each other through the internet and because they're geographically separated and they communicate with each other by design, it provides redundancy. So if one, two, or three or more of these servers are taken offline because of a disaster or some kind of event or outage, the other servers can handle the load for the rest of the network. And these servers receive and send email for all the users of the winlink.org system. And as a user, when you register, you get an email address with your radio call sign at winlink.org, the winlink.org domain. And these five servers send and receive traffic for all email coming and going for winlink.org email domain. The five servers, as I said, are connected to the internet. And then there's radio message servers, as you can see up above. And these are radio stations that are also connected to the internet that communicate between the end user or the amateur radio operators and the CMS servers. So these RMS stations as represented above are computers with ham radios and of course with antennas and they scan assigned frequencies waiting for amateur radio operators to connect over amateur radio frequencies for sending and receiving email and the RMS stations are the end users interface to the common message servers or CMS servers which then communicate to the internet. To find out what RMS stations are available, you go to winlink.org, there's a tab for maps, and you can pick HF gateways or UHF VHF gateways, and it'll come up with a map with little green dots representing all the active stations. So looking at this slide, these are HF or high frequency or shortwave RMS stations. Green means they're active and they're online, and they're standing by around the world waiting for somebody to connect to them and these green dots are communicating with the five CMS servers and I put the little uh, boxes below to show where they're at so the system these green dots are communicating with the CMS servers and waiting for people to connect I zoomed in on the United States to give you an idea how many RMS stations are available in the United States and when you have this map up, if you roll your cursor over any one of these green dots, the call sign will actually come up for that station. So the red arrow is pointing towards one of the stations that I did this to, and of course you can see the call sign there. And this is something you'd want to do once you're set up on this system, is get an idea how many stations are around your area. Because here I put a little red cloud over the northeast, and this represents some kind of communications outage. Uh, a hurricane, uh, a, a blizzard, a snowstorm, or some other kind of event where you lose communications in this area, but you want to send email, well, how would you do that? Well, I did a slide here to give you an idea. 
there you are in your retreat location in New York because a blizzard came through and you're surrounded by the zombies but you want to send an email to your mom in New Mexico well you fire up your amateur radio equipment use your radio to connect to an RMS station in Virginia outside of the impacted area and transmit your email to that station the station then in Virginia the RMS station is also connected to the internet so it passes your email traffic it just received down to one of the CMS stations and the CMS station sends it out to the email address you provided to your mother's house and the same thing works in reverse your mother could actually hit reply would transmit that email to the internet because that email address ends in winlink.org it would get routed to one of the five CMS servers and would sit there and wait until you connect it again and the next time you connect to the station in Virginia the Virginia RMS station will poll the system saying do I have any email for this person one of these five stations would say yes and that email traffic will get sent out over radio waves to your retreat location in New York and you'd get this email. Well, how is this applicable to preppers? Well, there's a sad real world example of how useful this system can be. Uh, during Hurricane Sandy, there was a replica ship, the HMS Bounty, uh, got caught up in the hurricane storm and sank. And the captain of that ship, uh, Captain Wellbridge, he was lost at sea. But he was also an amateur radio operator. And during the hurricane, he tried his satellite phones and his other radio communications equipment, and none of that worked. They couldn't get a hold of the Coast Guard to tell them they were in distress and the boat was sinking. But the captain had amateur radio on the, on the ship, and he had access to this very system, winlink.org, and he used winlink to send an email from the ship over HF radio to the United States Coast Guard, and within an hour after receiving that email, rescue C-130s and helicopters were on station and 14 of the crew members were rescued. Unfortunately, the captain lost his life and he was lost at sea, but this is a, a sad but very practical example of how amateur radio and more importantly amateur radio email can be a valuable part of your emergency communications plan and your prep. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper.